Christian Americans love herbal supplements. You turn to them for everything from fighting colds to boosting memory. But after today, I guarantee you'll never buy an herbal supplement the same way again. I'm going to show you how you're being duped, why you're wasting your money sometimes, and how to stop putting your health in jeopardy. They are the rapidly rising stars of the alternative medicine market. But herbal supplements may not be what they seem. Enter the researchers at the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada, the mecca for forensic testing that is changing the way science screens supplements. The team has developed a cutting-edge system that catalogs DNA from plants around the world. The DNA is given a barcode, much like items in your grocery store, and input into a DNA library that can then be cross-checked to prove a plant authenticity. One of the biggest studies to date tested 44 bottles of popular herbal supplements distributed by 12 different manufacturers. So what did this groundbreaking study reveal? Are your herbal supplements as good for your health as they claim to be? So Dominique, Naima, and Ashley are all joining me. They're going to help me reveal the surprising ingredients found in many of the herbal supplements that you are paying for and that you're taking. So I built, I built you a little pinata here. I hope you're happy about that. Excited. Here, here's your weapon for your pinata. Oh, gosh. Right now, the pinata <laughs> represents the supplements you're buying. The purple confetti in front of me represents what's supposed to be in that piñata. That's what you're paying for. But when researchers opened up these different herbs, opened the pills up and literally looked inside, go ahead and bust that piñata. Show me what they found. Whoa. Nice swing. Oh, not good enough. Try it again. Come on. I'm, should I hold it? Oh, please, I'm getting out of the way. All right. One more time. One more time. I got it. Oh, come on. Pass that thing along. Naima, take Here, that from her. Try one. Ready? Ready? Go. This is what heck of a piñata. One more time. <laughs> oh, there we are. Now we're talking. Well, let me show you something. So I've got all this stuff down here. We, so the scientists take all these things, and they, they look in them. Now, notice, what, we, what did we promise you? What the package said was you're getting purple. But in some cases, they didn't find that at all. What they found instead was these blues. Well, the blues represent fillers, things like rice and soybean and, and wheat products. They're not supposed to be in there. And they found pink confetti. Now, notice the pink is sort of close to the purple. You see that? Close isn't good enough, my friends. Because although they're closely related herbs, they do not have the same medicinal properties. And finally, lots of yellow stuff was in there. And yellow meant other potentially dangerous contaminants were found. And they're not supposed to be there at all. They're not mentioned anywhere in the packaging. Ashley, Dominique, and uh, Naima, what does that make you feel like when you realize wow. that you paid for this, but you're getting all this? Dr. Oz, I'm actually shocked. I'm very upset because I know, especially from a family who relies on supplements um, as a healthy way of life, to look inside of a supplement and have something that's not what it claims to be, that's outrageous. That's scary. You all share the outrage? I told them. Absolutely. Yeah. Come over here. Not only are you not getting what you paid for, there are often health risks associated with wow. this. Wow. So I'm going to show you what was found inside some of the more common herbal supplements that are being sold in, in this country. The first supplement that they tested was pink ginkgo biloba. And I understand you've been trying the supplements so, like so many others. I have. And why? I thought it would help improve my memory a little bit. My brain goes 90 miles an hour all the time, so I thought it helped me focus and give me some clarity. All right. So, again, ginkgo biloba, very commonly used. I mean, if you don't mind, help me sh show everyone what was actually in here. Pour it in here. Guess what? These are walnuts. Some of these pills literally had none of what you paid for, ginkgo biloba. And said they were filled with black walnut, which is actually very dangerous for people who have nut allergies. They were faking you out. So when you have things inside of these products that aren't mentioned anywhere, it makes me very concerned as to buy a dog. Thank you. Now, the next proper supplement that's often taken for mild depression is St. John's wort. Have you tried it? I have. I've been using it for years, actually. Um, and also, I mean, I don't drink coffee, so it gives me an extra boost. A little pep in my step. Yeah, and when did you, you started years ago? Has it worked for you, do you think? I think it has. I mean, I, I have energy. I always feel like I'm ready, you know, daring to go. So. <laughs> so a lot of times I talk about supplements on, on the show. And, of course, if you're buying something that says St. John's wort, and open this up for me if you don't mind. Ready? One, two. Just open and pour it out there. And instead of getting what we think works, and it worked for you with St. John's work, you're getting something called Alexandria Senna, which you shouldn't remember because it doesn't work. It's a plant grown in Egypt. It's a powerful laxative, in fact. Did you have that, did you have that problem at all? 
No. What? Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, imagine if you're depressed, you're taking St. John's work, and you have diarrhea all the time. I mean, that's really depressing. <laughs> that's right? a bigger problem. It makes it even worse. Right? So a lot of times you have changes in your bowel habits, gastric distress, when you're taking one of these supplements, it's a clue that they contaminated it with something. It's something we see a lot of times when people use these different products in there. Good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> and finally, echinacea supplement is taken by millions of Americans to prevent colds. Ashley, when did you start taking echinacea? I started taking it when I was young. My mom always used to say, take your C and echinacea. She always used to put the two together. And, and it works for you, as you mentioned. Yes, it does. Right, let's see what the researchers found when they looked in these echinacea tablets that are being sold all over the country. They found no echinacea at all oh in some of these products. They found weeds and plants, including something called fever fuel. Now, wow. again, the only reason I'm bringing that up is because fever fuel interacts with a lot of prescription medications for blood thinners. Oh, my gosh. Now, I want to say, what if you're taking something to deal with a common cold, and instead, now all of a sudden, you're bleeding all over the place? In, including internal hemorrhaging, because there was a drug-drug interaction you weren't warned about. Wow, and you think it's natural, natural supplements. Yeah, it could be harmful. I mean, chemotherapeutic agents come from natural products, too. Mm -hmm. You've got to use these things correctly. If they're not labeling them, you won't know. Yeah, right, thank, thank you. you Dr. Let's talk about what this means for you as consumers. Now, how do you really know which herbal supplements are safe to buy? Joining us is Dr. Todd Tuberman. He's president of Consumer Lab. Welcome back. Thank you. So what should a consumer do now that they realize that there's a lot of fake products in these supplements and there's no real obvious way to be protected by the government or these companies? Yeah, so ConsumerLab.com for the last 14 years, as you know, has been uh, buying and testing these products uh, to actually look in the bottle and see what's in there. Um, so you can look at our reports uh, on these products, past uh, products have passed that fail, uh, and you can also look for seals, uh, such as the ConsumerLab.com uh, seal, which can appear on products. Uh, there's a seal from NSF uh, and from USP. These are all third-party uh, certification programs. You know, I was so angry about this that I reached out to the FDA for a statement. And let me quote them. They said, dietary supplement manufacturers and distributors are not required to obtain approval from the FDA before marketing dietary supplements. Before a firm markets a dietary supplement, the firm is responsible for ensuring that the products manufactured or distributed are safe. In other words, it's not their fault. You have the full statement, by the way, on DrOz.com. Folks, right now, the real responsibility lies with you as the consumer, because you're the only one that's going to be able to change this. If you only buy high-quality products, the manufacturers will only make high-quality products. And the bad guys, guess what happens to them? They go bankrupt, which is what we all want. We'll be right back with supplements you do want to take, and we are going to name names. Stay here.